In this video, we'll talk about how we can use integrals to talk about the length of a curve, and in particular, the length of the graph of a function. So how can we approximate the length of a curve? Well, let's start by going back to how we thought about area originally. So we talked about finding area by sort of chopping the area up, the area under a curve, into a bunch of little pieces, and then adding them up using an integral. If we wanted to find the area of this region here, under a graph, I basically want to chop them into little pieces, all of which I know how to find the area of because they're rectangles, and then add them up, and then in the limit that gave me an integral. Now I want to think about doing the same thing, but for arc length. The idea being if I want to figure out how long a curve is, I can also break that up into little pieces, approximate the length of each of those little pieces, and then add them up. In the limit of that, I will again get an integral. So if I have a curve, what I can do is break it up into little pieces. Well, what can I do with those little pieces? If I put little dots here along the curve, I can approximate the curve between those points by a straight line. So I'll get that straight line there, that one there, that one there, that one there. These points are pretty close together, so the line's pretty accurate, but if they're further apart, you get a more inaccurate picture here. And the point is each of these approximations are straight lines, and that I know how to find the length of. And then if I add those up, I should get the approximate length of this curve. So what does this look like here? Well, if I use the graph of the function f of x in this setup, I know what each of these points are along my line. So if I pull out one of these little segments, I have my graph that looks like that. Say it's the first segment here on the far left. I have my two points here, and then I have my straight line segment between them. Now, what do I know about these points? Well, if this here is at x sub i, the ith sort of step in this process, this here, is at x sub i plus one, then I know where each of the y values are too because it's the value of the function. So this would be at f of x sub i, and this is f of x sub i plus one, which means I can now get this straight line out of the picture and make a triangle with it. And what do I know about this triangle? Well, the bottom side here is x i plus one minus x i, and the top, or the vertical side, is f of x i plus one, minus f of xi. We'll end up writing this guy here as a delta x, because that's what it is. But now I want to deal with the vertical side. So for the vertical side here, what I know is I can apply the mean value theorem, assuming that f is differentiable on this interval. I can apply the mean value theorem to say that f of xi plus one minus f of xi is f prime at c times xi plus one minus xi, where c is some point between xi plus one and xi. Well, what does this mean? This means I can rewrite this here as f prime at c times delta x. Now that I have these two sides of my triangle, I can figure out what the length of my line segment is. And we get here that l should be the square root of delta x squared plus f prime at c times delta x squared and square root of that. I can pull a delta x out of the square root sign. Delta x square root of one plus f prime of c squared. And I'm adding these up. And you should recognize this idea of adding up delta x times stuff is gonna to lead to an integral when I get to the limit. And so when I do that, I then get the following. Assume f prime exists and is continuous on the interval from a to b. And the arc length s, we'll use s to be our letter to indicate arc length here, of the graph of f of x over this interval is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. What that comes from the fact that l, what I had for my length before, square root of one plus f prime at c squared delta x, and I add those up and take a limit, that's gonna give me exactly this integral that I have above. The fact that this function here is the same is why this works. A key thing to realize here is because this is a square root and it's stuff inside a square root, this can be hard to integrate. There are a lot of functions where it's not really easy to integrate this to actually figure out what the arc length is. You may have to result in numerical integration to figure this out. Let's look at an example of what this might look like. So if I length of the curve, y equals x to the 3 halves over the interval from two to five, so by our formula, this should be the integral from two to five square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. And here f of x 
is x to the 3 halves, which means f prime is 3 halves x to the 1 half. So then f prime of x squared is 9 fourths x. Then what do I get for my arc length? My arc length is then s equals integral from 2 to 5, square root of 1 plus 9 fourths x dx. And this is one case where we can actually integrate this function. We're going to let u be 1 plus 9 fourths x, du is 9 fourths dx, which means this becomes an integral of 4 ninths times root u du. My bounds now become 1 plus 18 over 4, or 1 plus 9 over 2, 11 over 2, and then 1 plus 45 over 4, which is 49 over 4. I can then integrate this function, which gives me a 2 thirds u to the 3 halves between these bounds, and then we just plug these in. And that's what you get for the arc length of the curve between those two points. So that's the idea of what arc length is, what these formulas look like for how to compute it, as well as how you can set up these integrals and solve out for lengths of these curves if they're given as the graph y equals f of x.